Do y'all know what day it is? It is Friday. It is Friday. <laughs> and I am ready for it. Well, I seen uh I seen on Instagram y'all sold another box. Y'all are like the two box selling <laughs> duo, ain't you? We did. We actually got that from uh, the same distributor that we got the other one from, uh, and picked it up Tuesday afternoon. Very shot, first shot Wednesday morning. Same shot we sold the other two at. A guy wanted it, so it gets in the water, don't it? I guess so. I don't know if that could happen every day. <laughs> I'd be good, but um, he he was like he liked the purple one as well. Um, so he had been giving the guy that bought the purple one crap all week about buying the box from out from underneath him. So when I showed up. Did you up, sell it or did Leslie sell it? Uh oh, she's laughing, so she must have sold it. Actually, I sold I sold it, um, but I didn't mean to. Um, we had a guy wanting us to order a cart for him, and the other guy jumped up here and was wanting to buy uh, something, and she had mentioned, you know, hey, let's run your credit and see and. So when he got the approval, I was just saying, well, hey, you buy this one. And I turned around and told the other guy, I said, and you buy that one. We don't have to order nothing. And they just said, okay. Wow. So, uh, I don't know. I guess we count that as a team effort, but uh, we were happy with it. Outback now. <laughs> <laughs> we do like Outback. That's true. So it's almost over. Summer's almost over, but we are still selling AC stuff. So this week we've been showing everybody the AC couplers. Um, we actually have them to where we can turn our um, 134 gauges uh, to where they'll do both. Mm -hmm. um, some people want two separate sets of gauges. Some people's like, I don't want to spend that much money. Yeah. Uh, so the gauge reads the pressure, so why not? So we've been showing everybody these. Um, it just helps keep the cost down on tools and stuff like that. That way, you know, uh, there is a few AC machines out there that uh, um, do both. Uh, the only downfall to it is if you've got that one, because even though the new Freon uh, is more popular this year than it's ever been, uh, with car manufacturers going to it quickly, uh, you still got a bunch of 134A that you're working mm -hmm. on. So the problem with one AC machine is if you're tied up on that 134, you're not going to be able to do the other one or vice versa. But the same way if you've got two 134s in there, right. you'd have to wait. So it's not a huge deal. But it's same same couple that we've always seen. It's just it converts our gauges over so that we can have one gauge right. set. And all we gotta do is screw these off, screw them on, and we're ready to go. So we sold a bunch of these this week um, to, to people just getting ready because they know it's coming. You're gonna have to have both. So um, let me get y'all, that's the low side he just showed. Let me get y'all a part number on that. So there's that. And then there's the high side part number. So there you go. I did see this week talking about uh, Freon. I saw where I think it's BMW or something like that. Uh, may have been Mercedes. I can't remember. They're actually out with another new Freon. Fantastic. Uh, it was uh, <laughs> I think R744. I think um, it's a CO2 base. I don't know nothing about it. Um, reading on it it seems like the pressures are going to be uh really weird really odd and really hard to control so yeah um it took a special machine to do it of course i hope we stay with a one two three yf uh a little while longer i think it's one two three uh four yf but either way i hope we stay with it for a pretty good time because we start switching this quick it's just gonna yeah, we're going Ridiculous, to have, yeah. Well, you're going to have a lot of people just get out of AC for a while. Mm -hmm. They're going to let the, the water settle a little bit because they're not going to want to buy a machine for every different one. That's kind of like before they made uh, the OBD codes all the same. You know, what was it, 95 when they mm -hmm. did that? It's kind of a free-for-all for all the different dealerships to have different codes or, or manufacturers, not dealerships. But um, a lot of people just stuck to one brand that way they would know what they're working on and everything else. Well, I know a guy that does some older vehicles, not like restore them to pristine condition, but he buys a lot of older trucks and fixes them up. You know what he uses instead of R12? Uh, I've seen people do propane. That's what he uses, propane. 
Well, that's basically what the new one is, the um, 1234YF. It's a propane base. Mm. Um, like he uses it straight out of the grill bottle. Yeah. I've, like I've heard people doing his that. hose, his gauges to fit the propane bottle. Yeah. Pops that bad boy on there, fires it up, and charges it up. Yeah. He I said just, it works great. I don't yeah. Know. The only thing I'd be worried about is the pop off valves on some of them compressors if it popped off. Um, as long but as you backfire, I guess you'd be all right. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I, mean I had a, you know, back when we first started duck hunting in the Delta, we bought a camper, and that's what the eight, the uh, refrigerator stuff run on was propane. They say it gets cold super quick, so, so I can I can see it working better than the one. Uh, the, uh, one <laughs> it just seems like a uh oh waiting to happen to me, but hey, yeah, toss you know, up. He's done it for years, so. Some of the other things we've been showing this week. We had a sales meeting. These wasn't at it. Throw that down. These wasn't at it, but these here was. So um, these little kits are nice. I had them when I first started. Um, they had them and they were real popular. Then we went to the hard cases. The mm -hmm. master set still comes in the hard case. I really like this phone. That's going to sit in your toolbox nice. Yeah, I like it, phone. Uh, the cases take up. Uh, too much room but on a service truck you probably want the case rather than this so i guess right. it's just the application that you're in but with these here you don't have to worry about the plastic um breaking yeah, and cracking plastic trays. which somebody on one of the videos suggested uh what spray was spray foam, foam. so I've, I've been telling people that i haven't i don't know if anybody's ever done it i haven't but it seems like a really good idea it would just keep it from cracking mm -hmm. uh, but with these here, we don't have to worry so about that. So it's got hex, security torques, regular torques, e-torques. It's a, it's a good starter kit for sure. Um, the master set um, does cover a little more, but with this one here, uh, if you're just starting out and need something small in your box, don't need that big heavy case, Right. this is probably the way to go. Uh, it gives you a little bit of everything. Used to, you could say, okay, well, I don't need these and I don't need these. Well, you but really can't say pretty, that. Yeah, you have no clue uh, now. It can pull in your bay, and you could use one of every row um, quickly on one job. Yeah. That they have pulled all stops to Absolutely. make it as difficult as possible to have everything you need. So <laughs> those adjustable a, pry bars are really good to have too. I've got uh, some of my heavy duty shops that use them, getting the injectors and stuff out. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That little ones that I used to pull injectors with a lot. It's nice. There used to be a really good set that everybody liked, and they changed it up a little bit. Um, this set kind of gets back to that, to where they really like it to pull the injectors and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's some of that diesel stuff that I haven't really ever messed with. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't care. It sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, I know they sell good. That's why I have them on the truck, but. Yeah. Those are nice. We kind of went back to the basics this week. Um, just selling near normal sockets, you know, your quick sets like that. Um, couplers and stuff like that. Nothing just huge, but uh, makes the job get done a little quicker if you got the right stuff, right? How popular are these right here? Not near enough. Um, they're popular for people that know uh, why they're so popular. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I'll just order the can from AutoZone or whatever. Mm. Uh, that's already filled and I ain't got to worry about it. That's great if you're not doing a big uh, valve cover job that's leaked for six years. Yeah. It's going to take 12 cans. The yeah, good thing about You can buy a gallon of brake clean cheap yes. compared to cans. Well, and, and when you think about it, that there, uh, with them cans, the, the longer you use the can, the more it kind of just starts sprinkling out but still got yeah. probably a quarter at the bottom mm -hmm. and you're shaking it trying to get it to come Dribbles out. Dribbles out, yeah. Well, this here, you can pressurize it as many times as you need to keep that steady stream that you're actually, um, of course, we know we're not pressure washing with it, but right. it has the pressure to get some of that uh, burnt oil and because we all know it gets kind of thick and sticky and all that. Well, that kind of washes that away and we can keep it pressurized. Um, we had them at Toyota when I was there uh, they were actually where you went and sat them on a machine and filled it that way. That's great. But the problem with that is, unlike this one where you can just pour more in, mm -hmm. uh, that one you had to drain out what was in it, so you just wasted it. This one, there's no waste. You, you, if you're out of air but you still got fluid, make charge sure all the air's out. You know, you can charge it back up or you can break the top loose, add your 
you know, brake clean, charge it back up, right. go again. Less waste. Um, you probably will use more because you're you're not gonna get mad and say screw it. That's clean enough. Yeah. Um, but I know I have a couple of people that are real uh, OCD about having everything spotless, and that's kind of the way it needs to be. Uh, and they have them. But well, I know I bought a um, the OTC. It looks like a sprayer pump, but it's yeah. the prime the Detroit's with. Or you can prime several trucks with it, but I bought it for Detroit's. And I wanted to add one on the service truck, and I got to looking at it. I went to Walmart and bought a two-gallon pump-up sprayer like you'd use for your yard. Yeah. And changed the fittings and yep. made one for a lot less money. Yeah. And it works just as good. Those there, they everybody needs one. Everybody needs a pressure sprayer that they can mm -hmm. refill. Um, a lot of a lot of shops have got to where they're not really cleaning it off. I don't know how you know the repair's done if you don't clean it off. Yeah. Um, to me, I want it spotless. That way, if it so much as drips one time, I know exactly where it's coming from. Well, after having that phone cannon, I think everybody would have a phone cannon if you wash your own vehicles. Everybody needs a that's, phone cannon. That, thing, uh, that was. That's probably other than the half inch pneumatic impact that I bought off this truck and that pair of Nipex, the Swedish pipe wrench that yeah. I got for pulling those airbag studs. Those are probably my top two favorite Matco purchases and number three is gonna be the foam cannon. Yeah. So with a foam cannon makes it easy to <laughs> wash a car. <laughs> the foam cannon I people um they get discouraged with it because they'll have a super dirty car and they'll go out there and they'll use it and they'll say, see, it missed, missed this. And it's like, well, you kind of didn't use it right. Um, if it's if it's not bad and you can go out there and just spray the soap on it and spray it off, that's great. But how many times do you get in the shower and just spray soap on you and then yep. wash it off? That's not how you do it. Mm -hmm. It's made to spray on there. Take your brush or foam uh, sponge. Well, that's what I did the first time yeah. you know, on my wife's car. And then the second time, we just had a couple of bugs on it. I pressure washed it first with just water. Yeah. Screw that foam cannon on there. Man, that thing looked like I hand washed it again. I'm like, yeah, buddy. Well, Five the, minutes and I was back in the air conditioning. This is my kind of car wash right here. That's that's the key. <laughs> if if you use a pressure washer first and pressure wash all the uh, big yeah. heavy spots off, you can do that. You can just spray it on and spray it off. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you're not going to go mud riding and spray this soap oh, yeah. on there and then not scrub anything or use pressure washer and get it off first. So uh, once I've told people that, you know, and it it speeds the process up because how many times have you dipped your brush in the bucket, got a couple swipes with it and had to come back, dip, dip it, again. you're going back and forth. Uh, this, you spray the whole side down and you're doing it real quick. Just make sure the brush uh, brushes over everything, spray it off, good to go. Man, I turn that thing down where it squirts it out. It looks like shaving cream on Yeah. It. <laughs> that's it my truck was so nasty you know where i've been in the cow pasture and stuff with it and uh i pressure washed it real good to start with and i sprayed it with foam and then i i didn't really care if it was that clean or not you know and i hit it a little bit with a brush it looked like i painted that truck that's it, <laughs> it that's like it. I sent it to a paint shop when it got done so. uh, cleaning this truck's a nightmare uh, uh -huh. and it makes it pretty easy with that thing because mm -hmm. you're just spraying it on one person spraying it on and by the time you've got the, the side sprayed the other person's done halfway down with the brush so you're just going back and washing it off yeah. uh, it speeds the process up you're not sitting there trying so hard so did y'all hear what he just said so that means he holds the pressure washer and makes leslie run a brush no, i didn't say that <laughs> uh that is what happens that's but a I didn't smart say that. guy right there he got it figured out i didn't say that but that is what happened <laughs> but yeah um you know those Swedish uh, pliers as well. I don't have any on the truck right now. I'm waiting on them to come back in, but that's something everybody sleeps that, on too. That S jaw, yeah, dude. I don't care. Like if you got to pull a threaded stud out, it's coming out or it's breaking off. That's the two options you got. I have seen them used in places that I just knew. I'm, well, I mean, when they're made to turn a pipe, a, a slick pipe, a, a stud's just not no match for it it's really not like you said it's either going to break loose or break off either okay. way um, and the way that they have it to where when you're pushing on one um it just handle it, you know you don't, it don't matter how big it is it, it, it don't matter if your pliers are, are this far open because of how big the object is you just use that one side mm -hmm. you can put your whole weight on that one side and that's not letting go well i had a buddy of mine he bought a used truck 
it was like a 06 Chevrolet two-wheel drive, you know. And he tried to change the oil at home, and he called me and said, dude, I can't get this drain plug out. Like, it's rounded out. I said, bring it up here. I got some stuff we can get it out with. And uh, he brought it up here, and I looked at it, and I thought, worst case scenario, I'll weld a nut to it, you know, and get it out. And I just reached and grabbed them because they was right there on the table beside where I was working. Man, it wasn't nothing to it. He said, I got to get me a pair of them. <laughs> I said, That's they, it. They work now. They'll That's it. Something. I mean, from the airbags to, to that, uh, I wouldn't um, take away from the drill bits either. I think they need to be high up on the list. But mm -hmm. well, just a couple of those things that make that nightmare job yeah. not so nightmarish. Um, it makes turning wrenches not so bad. <laughs> I mean, we still. I don't know about that. It still sucks, but well, it makes it say, not suck as bad. Uh, we still, we still hate some of the engineering fails that we see yeah. um, that they think is wonder, wonderful. You know, let's put an engine right up against the firewall and have a six-inch bolt got to come out to do a valve cover or something. I think but, the dumbest automotive fail would have to be when they put the starter under the intake, like the North Stars. Well, and, I, and I'll that's, fault. That's got to be way up on the list if yeah. I'm at the top. Well, I hate when they put them underneath the, uh, and Toyota does this. They put it underneath the manifold, the exhaust manifold. That is retarded. First off, most of the time, when All somebody right. brings it to the shop, they want it done right now, and that exhaust is stupid hot. And mm -hmm. then on top of that, uh, exhaust studs are known to break. Um, they're known to rust bad due to heating up, cooling off water, all that good stuff. Um, I'd, I'd well, rather see, have the, it under the intake than, than the exhaust manifold. But the guy that clicked all that mouse to draw that out, he'll never have to worry about that. Never, he'll, never. He'll, He's never took care. one off. He uh, probably drew that with an Apple pencil laughing the whole time. <laughs> probably <You know>? so, <laughs> but either way. Uh, He's probably like, I cannot wait till the first blog comes out and people start talking about how bad an idea this is. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's, um, every manufacturer has their stupid uh, deal like that, but uh, that's just like on the uh, Scion FRSs. You're supposed to drop the engine down uh, so far just to change the spark plugs. Why in the hell do I want to drop the engine down to do spark plugs? I want to go out in the yard and do a spark plug change in like an hour and a half, not six yeah. hours later. Um, yes, if I have a rack, it doesn't take that long, but that's still, it's a terrible design in my opinion. Well, they make it so normal folks can't work on it, you know, it's job security for the dealership. I think a lot of the, a lot of the time that's what it is. Well, I'm afraid they're fixing to make it to where nobody's working on it. I mean, it's already hard to get texts, and now you're fixing to throw in, um, not to go down on a rabbit hole or nothing, but you're fixing to throw in high voltage on top of it. Yeah, well, California, uh, you know, they passed that law, I think it was like 2030 or something, that there's no more gas vehicles can be sold in I saw California. a uh, receipt. Now, this receipt could have been heavily fabricated. I don't know. But I saw a receipt where a Volt had went in with like 80,000 miles or something like that, uh, and a battery change was $29,000. That was it a throwaway car at that point. You know, or, I mean, you may be done paying for the car at 80,000 miles, but if you're not and you're fixing to get a $20,000 repair bill, you know, on the hybrid Toyotas, they were between five to $6,000 for a battery change. That's and it bad. Would, but the thing but about it they, is, that, that was terrible. <laughs> but the thing about it is, that's not even driving the vehicle. That's, I mean, you yeah. still got a gas engine driving the vehicle. So you take and you say, okay, everything's 100% electrical. I can see where that's gonna be a $20,000 battery change. I don't want no part of that. Yeah. Uh, but again, not to go down the rabbit hole, but you're gonna have a lot of techs that's afraid to mess with that. Cause you don't have just everybody running to the power company wanting to run power lines. Most people say, no, nah, I don't like electricity. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna have a lot more having to work on it. Well, we can thank California. They weren't diesel engines and everything else. So great job guys. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I look at it like this, when Joe Biden has to fly in a helicopter with emissions and ride around with emissions on his vehicle, the rest of us should too. I did see where a, a fire department went. They have a fire truck that's all electrical. I, I want to pay attention to that and see how that goes. Yeah. I'd hate to know my house was on fire and the battery's low now, because there, there's some of them fires. People don't understand, there's fires that last six, seven, eight, nine hours. 
Boy, I hope that battery's big. Well, the good thing about it, most fire trucks, you know, they don't have many miles on them. I remember when Boonville sold that 1960 something model. Yeah. Fire truck and only had 12,000 miles on it. Yeah, but if you think about it, the miles ain't really gonna matter on a fire truck. You gotta run them pumps. Those pumps take a lot of a lot of juice. Um, I don't think it takes as much as you think it does. I don't know. Because uh, I know on that little county truck they had, it had a five horse Honda engine on it to run the the pump. And man, you couldn't hold that thing. I, don't I think know. it's I think it's a little little easier to compress that water than what you think. Yeah, but for four or five hours, I mean, a, a drill, it's not hard to spend a drill uh, to put a number two screw in either, but it yeah. still goes dead pretty quick. So uh, I think, I don't I don't think it's necessary the, the well, strength. Well, they electric compress. planes now. I saw a thing where they had planes that was all electric, and it's facing to be commercial planes flying. Here's the thing. I'm open to change. Let me put this out there. I'm open to change. But if y'all are going to change that quick, I'm yeah. going to sit back and watch it for a while. Yeah. I'll drive until I can, I, I'm fine with driving hey, electric. If your battery runs down, going down the road, maybe you can coast off to the side of the road, right? Fine with that. I don't know how it's gonna work up there about 50,000 feet. I, I don't, don't wanna be on that plane when they figure it out. So I tell you what, <laughs> I, I, I'm still, the, the why even go over the safety features on the plane when we're talking uh, about, you know, here's your water vest and all that. 90% of the time I flow, the, the, the water's a lot less than the land, so, uh, Oh, and what kills me is they get all upset if you don't have that seat belt on. Like, fella, I hate to tell you, if we fall from 50,000 feet, I don't think that little seat belt's going to save my life. No, negative. So, I mean. I just seem to bounce around get knocked out before that before. sudden stop. You know? Till we get charging stations up in the air, I think I'll hold off on the, the You'll hear the plane. pilot. Uh, if y'all don't mind, plug your cell phones into that USB port. We're gonna need a little bit of extra juice to make it there today. <laughs> That's it. They're gonna be buying, but buying a little bit of battery voltage from us. There you go. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not afraid to change, but y'all change first, and I'll watch. <laughs> That's true. All right, guys, y'all have a good one. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes down here. If you're not subscribed, click that button. Y'all have a great one. See ya.